morning and find a place to pray and say, God, not my will this morning. Not my will, God, but thy will be done. Amen. Not my will, God, but your will, God, in my life. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we can have plans. We can have dreams and goals. But if you submit your life to God, let me tell you, you don't know where God's going to take you. You don't know what God can do for you. I can tell you when I graduated high school just two years ago, I had dreams to go great, do great things in this world. I had dreams to go to college and do great things. But in college, when God began to deal with me, He began to show me and turn me in a different direction. He began to say, you know what? You wanted to be used by me. Now I'm beginning to use you, so I'm going to turn you in a different direction. I'm going to guide you into a different path. I'm going to take you to somewhere else in your relationship with me. All right. I'm not saying to give up on the things of this world. You know what? I'm still in college. I'm still going to school. But my path has been changed. Yes. My path has been altered by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. Because I've submitted myself to God. And I said, God, not my will, but thy will be done. Thank you, you know, Jesus. Some people, we need to ask God each and every day, God, have your will in my life. God, have your will in my life. Don't, God, don't allow me to do anything that's not pleasing to you. That's right. Amen. You know, but in 2 Samuel chapter 3, when, when they said, David, isn't that Uriah, the wife of Uriah? You know, so many times that's, that's our response. We say, you know what? I don't really care. You know what? They don't know the whole situation. They don't know what I'm going through. They don't know where I've been, where I'm going. Oh, but let me tell you, that is the biggest mistake you can ever make to disobey or to not listen to the voice that says, wait, you need to watch it for a minute. You just need to realize and double, just take a check on where you're going and what you're going into. Right. Because where you're going can make you do things that you will regret for the rest of your life. Yes. Maybe going to school. You know what? We go into places and we say, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to school and I'll be such a witness. I'll just go to the party because I'll be able to be a witness there. You know what? I'll go hang out at the friend's house that, you know, the, the cool group because I'll be able to tell them about church on Sunday morning. You know what? But we need to realize that, you know what? Maybe you don't need to be in that situation. That's right. Can't you just tell them about church at your school? Can't you just tell them about church? You know, you don't have to go into the situation. Amen. And God says, you know what? You don't need to be there. Yes. You don't need to go into that place because there's things that are not pleasing to me. Yes. There's things that people are doing that you should never even be part of. That's right. We need to realize that the desires of our heart we need to line up with what God has in store for us. Amen. You know, the definition for desire was to long for or hope for, to ask or request. I long to be used by God like I've never been used by God before. Like no one's ever been used by God. And we as this generation need to ask God each and every day. God, I long to be used by you. I long to have a relationship with you. I long, God, to one day walk on streets of gold. I long, God, to know you and become yes. intimate with you. You know, because we, we by ourselves are nothing. We have no clue where we're going and what we're doing and how we're going to get there if we rely on our own knowledge. If we rely on our own strength and our own ability. You know what? We're just a pile of junk. That God's, but God looks down and says, you know what? That pile of junk is willing to be used by me. Amen. It into something that is great. Amen. In the kingdom of God. You know, our, just last Sunday, our pastor preached a message entitled, For They Know Not What They Do. And he told us, you know what? Each and every individual in this place, do, you do not know what you're doing. You don't know how you're doing it. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know where you're going. But if you rely on God, God is going to take you to places and take you and put you in situations that you never thought you would be. Because if you allow Him to use you, then you know that He knows what you're going to do. Amen. He knows how He's going to use you. But if you rely on your own self, you don't know what you're doing. That's right. right. And I'm so thankful that I can say, you know what? One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Amen. It doesn't say I just desire it, and I put it in the cabinet, and one day when I'm walking on streets of gold, I say, you know what, God? I'm glad I desired that. You know what? I'm glad that I that I wanted to walk on the streets of gold one day because it's a lot better than going to the other place. I'm glad I desired it. You know, I'm glad I wrote it down and stuck it in my, in my Bible and didn't think about it anymore. But the Bible says, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after. Right? Yes. We've got to seek after it each and every day. Amen. When the, house, when the doors of the house of God are open, we've got to be excited to come in here. We've got to find a place to pray and say, God, have your will in the service. God, I desire for your spirit to move in such a mighty way tonight. God, I desire for you to be in this place for the Shekinah glory to fall. Amen. To be so thick in here, God, that 
people driving by can just feel your Yes, hallelujah. That's what I desire. Yes, thank you, Jesus. You know, and then when we're able to fulfill those desires, you know, it's not hard to come to church. It's not hard to come to church and sit on a pew and worship if we desire to be here. That's right. If we desire to be used by God, when God finally begins to use us, you know, it's something exciting. Exactly, yes. You know, as a, young, as a little boy in junior high and high school, I was petrified to talk in front of people. Absolutely petrified. I would shake and sweat and bust. And I would, you know, I was scared to death. No matter if it was two or two thousand, I didn't care how many. If I had to speak in front of somebody, I was scared to death. But I said, you know what? Because of my own ability, I am nothing. If I come up here as just Nathan Eves tonight, you know what? I would be scared to death to stand here and speak in front of you. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of God, yes. I would stand here in front of you. Know what? I don't care what Thank you. And I can actually say, you know what, I was glad when he called me and said, you know, would you come? I didn't have to, you know, worry about it. I didn't have to fret. I didn't have to stress about it over and over and over again. But I was excited because it's something I desire. It's yes. something that God has put in me. And when God puts a desire in you, when you're able to fulfill it, it's going to be so wonderful. It's going to be so great. It's going to be such an awesome experience when God finally gives you something that you desire for a long time. Thank you, Jesus. You know, no matter what it is. I don't care how long you've been in church, how, how old or how young you are. Each and every one of us has desires in our relationship with God. Each and every one of us has, should have a desire in the kingdom of God. Whether it be, you know, I don't know if, if I desire to sing on the platform one day. If, it, if I desire to be the best soul winner. If I desire to be the first person up worshiping and running the aisles. We all need to have a desire in our relationship with God. Amen have something inside of us that we work for, that we strive for, that we say, you know what, this is what I long for, and I'm going to work for it. This is what I desire, and this is what I, this is what I want to see in my life, and I'm going to do it because I want God to be happy with me. Amen. I don't want to come in here and sit on a pew and worry about what others think. No, I don't care what others think about me. Come on. I don't care what people think about me because I know a desire that God has put in my heart that says, you know what? I'm going to be used by God in such a mighty way. No, I don't want the desires of this world to take place of the desires that God has put in our lives. Amen. To realize that when God orchestrates and puts desires in us, it's for a purpose. He has something in mind for you. He has something in store for your life. And He can take you and do great things with you in the kingdom of God. That's right.